Hello everybody, Cripps here and thanks for watching me. So if you're a professional photographer, you're most likely not going to learn anything from me. But if you're a, uh, an absolute beginner, then this tutorial is great for you because I'm going to show you how to bring a photo in, do a little bit of details and then export it to whatever it is you want to do with it. So that's what I am about to do. Okay, so I'm using Corel Aftershot Pro 2 and by now if you are learning photography, you are shooting in RAW not in JPEG. Now the reason why you do that is because RAW gives you so much more detail to work with in a photo editor such as this. Now thing to note with this one here, this is a non-destructive editor. In other words, I can do whatever I want to my photos. It will always preserve the original. So I don't have to worry about if I make an edit that I have lost the original photo. Not a problem. And I'll show you later on how to do all of that. So first thing we need to do is obviously bring the photo in so we go right over the left hand side file system this is my directory and all i need to do now is look for where these photos are so it loads pretty quick as you can see i can toggle through here and they come up pretty quick i have three ways of looking at this i can look at all the thumbnails at once thumbnail with a preview or just the preview itself now if i'm working with a lot of photos you most likely want to work with a thumbnail interesting to note as you're bringing them in, as the thumbnails, they will load and you can watch them already. You can already start looking around even while it's loading and that's pretty cool. I don't know if it's the power of the 64 or it's just the, uh, <laughs> the way the program works, but it's, it's a pretty neat effect. All right, so now once you have all your photos in here, if you're a professional photographer, you're shooting thousands of photos and you need to go through them pretty quickly, get them off to your client for proofing and then start working on them. So if you went on a holiday, you went to Australia, France and Bali, you may want to do the same thing. You may want to work only on the Australian photos first. So how you do that is by giving it a category, okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that. So over here, I've got a, quite a few photos of a motorbike, but as you can see, some of, them are, some of them are good and some of them are bad. Or most people look at them and go, they're all crap, dude. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at all the underexposed photos. So let's do that. So I want to just sort out all the underexposed photos. So I'm going to hold down my control key and then just go through it that way. So that, that, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. There is another way of doing this, but you're beginning and I'm showing you the fastest way possible. And once you have chosen the ones you think are severely underexposed or whatever it is, you, whatever category you're trying to form, you can then give them a, a star rating or you can label them with different colors or you can just give it a flag. You know, flag for whatever reason, as a pick or as a reject. Now. Because they're all pretty bad photos, I might just give it a star rating of one. And then I just want to see those photos. So I go over here, what looks like a champagne glass. I flag it as the rating system, and there you go. So now all the, one, all the photos that I think are one, uh, that's the only ones I'm viewing. I can close this window, but it's still enabled. If I don't want this, my champagne glass is now green. I turn off. And bingo, it's all back to normal, okay? So that's how we get through our photos, when, especially we've got lots of them. All right, and then let's start working on a couple of photos. Now, why you want to shoot in RAW, and I'll show you why. Let's have a look at a photo where it looks like it's pretty underexposed, okay? Let's have a look at this one. Uh, not that one. <laughs> let's have a look at one that's really poor in lighting. Oh, that's one we'll do. All right, okay, now... In most photos, if I was a JPEG, there's not much I can do with it, okay? But because it's raw, I can pull out so much detail. I can increase my exposure and bring back uh, more of my bike. Or I can increase my fill light. So do the same thing. So what is exposure and what is fill light, you may ask? Well, they're kind of the same thing, but the exposure will expose every color that you see and then bring them up or bring it down. Whereas the fill light will work in your mid-tones. It'll work in the, the colors between the black and the white. So you're not going to lose as much detail. I'll show you what I mean. I'll go to a photo that I worked on earlier. And if I push it right up, you'll see that... Is it this one here? Probably. All right. So, okay. Um, yeah, this is the one. All right, so if I now push my exposure, because I already have a lot of overexposed area, 
you'll see what happens. I'm going to lose detail in the back. This is now completely washed out. So exposure is not going to work, but fill light might work better. Okay, okay, so I brought the fill light up, but I haven't quite washed all this out. I, I can also add an adjustment layer, but this is getting ahead of us. So this is the difference between exposure and fill light. Now, with the fill light, I have a little bit more options. If I go into tone, I go into fill light here. I also have the fill range, you see? So I can turn it back down and bring back some of the detail that I've lost in the back. And then I can go back to the standard and then use a plug-in like Perfectly Clear just to help me punch the colors through. Okay, so that's, that's the difference between exposure and fill light. So here's my basic adjustments as well. If I use my magnifying glass and I zoom in on this, all right, I'd have a lot of noise and it, or chatter. I can actually get rid of that as well. Uh, let's turn that one off. I can use enable noise. Okay, so now that, that's kind of just removed some of the chatter or the noise. See, now it's really clear. This, the white on the, on the bike is now really clear. But I always find that it gives a bit of a blur effect, so I'm going to lose a little bit of detail. So I might then use a sharpening filter and just to bring some of that detail back. Okay. Now, I'm not showing you uh, how good or bad I am <laughs> editing photos. I'm teaching what you have available. It is, uh, photography is art. Art is subjective. Some may like it. Some may not like your photos. But at the end of the day, if you're just watching this and hanging on your wall, it's not going to magazine, so it's only important to you, right? <laughs> That's my opinion. So let's go back to here. Okay, now, let's say I've worked on this photo, but I want to see what the original one looked like. So let's do, let's do a comparison. Let's grab something really obvious. For now, I'm just going to uh, expose it right up, and then I'm going to create an, uh, a copy of that one. So that's this one here, over here. I right-click, I go to Version, and now I have the different, uh, the different types of uh, versions I can do. I can do from current or whatever. So I might just do it from the actual uh, default. So let's do that. All right, so this is the original photo. So now I've got the two photos. And let's see how good the two look together. So I'm going to highlight both. So Control. And I'm going to use this little icon over here, which will display the two photos at once. So now I can do a quick comparison between the two. I can zoom in on the individual photos as well. So I have a lot of power at my fingertips to work with photos. So here's a quick way I can see, oh yeah, you know, that's a huge improvement or I can do better or whatever. So this is one way of going through. And if you don't want that look, you just untoggle that again. It's a multi-view and then you go back to doing it is what you were doing. Okay. So that is just a quick uh, way of getting around. Now we need to do is save it and then get ready for the print. There's a couple of ways we can do it, but I'm going to show you the easiest way. Go to File, Export, Export Files, Window pops up. And now you can work with uh, different uh, settings here, like this, the type, the size you want to work with. Do you want to work with TIFF? Now TIFF is Tag Image File Format. This is very popular for people that don't want to use it into some form of graphic uh, software. But if you are going to use this to print it out, you may want to talk to your local printer, uh, which he prefers. Some will actually prefer in a TIFF format. They don't mind it because that, is there a huge difference? Mm, some say yes, some say no. It just depends on the size of the photo. Uh, the guy that I bring my photos to, he actually prefers in TIFF. So it's worth, uh, worth knowing, but if not, just go basically with the uh, jpegs you can also do here output same thing again but it just gives you more options here you know jpeg proof jpeg full size galleries and so forth don't worry about these this is for another tutorial you just want to make a photo edit it export it so file export export files and that's all you need to do so there you go my friends this is a quick tutorial on how to get through editing a photo from start to finish and like i said this is a basic entry-level tutorial to show you how to use a raw editor for your photos. And as always, thanks for watching.